I'm in the studio of Michael Lichtenstein, who is uh, who I met at uh, Arts League of Lowell, and uh, I was uh, interested about his one for one thing about his background because I wasn't able to find too much about him on the internet when I was doing some research on him. So, uh, where did you get started with art? What's, what's your education well, in art? My uh, formal education was at the School of Visual Arts out in New York City. That I went there. Uh, for film and photography, but while there, of course, as an art school, you get to do all forms of art, including uh, painting and drawing, and I was uh, extremely motivated by a artist there, or a teacher there, and an artist, whose name was Charles Close, who turned me on to the sort of the black and white, very detailed technique, although I... Um, I've always been drawing. I mean, I, since I was a little kid, I used to take some of my father's books and find some blank pages at the beginning or at the end of his books, and I would scribble in there, for which I used to get in trouble for uh, quite a bit. But I've always drew here and there, uh, photographed here and there, but uh, drawing and painting, I did it pretty much... Uh, my whole life, and then uh, after School of Visual Arts, it sort of uh, I did it more, and um, and I'm still doing it. Yeah. So you have a very uh, your your uh, your lot your art is very detailed. Uh, it, how did you develop that uh, approach to? Um, well, it's it you know it came about um, it just came about on its own kind of a thing you know I. Um, I did a uh, few things, and I did a tree once, and uh, and did all the le you know started doing the leaves, and I liked the way it looked, and I liked the tree concept because I think uh, everything um, naturally sort of forms. I can you can do a lot of things and uh, a lot of forms in a tree, and so it just sort of grew from there. It just sort of organically went from. Uh, uh, for me, it was a form of meditation, I suppose. Um, you know, having a daytime job, supporting uh, um, my wife, my kids, my house. Uh, this sort of became a, a meditative form of relaxation uh, for a few hours after work, here and there, an hour here, 45 minutes there. And uh, people liked it, so uh, I kept doing it. Uh, another thing about your work is it seems to have a mythical or mystical quality to a lot of it. Uh, where do you get your inspiration from for those? Well, I, um, I I read a lot of uh, science fiction and fantasy, uh, so that's uh, that's part of it. Another part of it is um, you know it's interesting. It's a lot more interesting than just a normal figure of a person. I'd rather have a figure of a person with wings. Um, it's more interesting to me in, uh, in, in that concept. Yeah. Uh, your work is done in ink, and I think a lot of people uh, maybe won't, don't appreciate the, uh, the painstaking effort that it takes to lay down, uh, lay down ink lines that detailed. Uh, how long does it take you to... To produce a, a piece? Well, um, smaller piece I can usually uh, scratch out in about, a, uh, in about a week. And some of the larger pieces uh, take me a, um, a couple of months. The thing is, I never work on one thing at a time. I usually try to do two or three things, sort of keep it interesting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you know, larger pieces take two or three months. Smaller pieces I could probably do in a week uh, to two weeks. There's a certain finality also to, uh, to when you use ink. You know, once, when you put a line down, that's it. There's no going back and uh, there's no using uh, correction fluid or anything like that. Uh, no, that is true. And uh, I, know, I know artists that usually, you know, they do a whole lot of painstaking uh, outline before they put the before they go into the black and white um, generally I can correct things in the detail you know I could if I make a wrong line I can incorporate it into something else 
What I couldn't do in the old days when I was just using a quill or a, uh, a rapidograph is on occasion you get a blob just <laughs> and that is very difficult to correct. So uh, that's why I went to, uh, you know, now I use primarily microns. I still use rapidographs because they're even finer than the microns that I can find. But uh, primarily it's a, it's a nice, easy, no, no blob uh, <laughs> way of making, uh, of doing the art. Uh, so where are you currently, uh, where do you currently exhibit? Um, you know, everywhere that I've lived, I exhibited. Um, I, when I was, um, for, uh, for a few years, me and my best friends from college had a, uh, business in Danbury, Connecticut, and I exhibited in Danbury and, um, and Richfield and, and, uh, Westport and areas around there. Since I moved to Lowell, I've, uh, made friends with, uh, um, members of the All Arts Gallery. And, um, so I started, joined the All Arts. So I started exhibiting over there. Um, met some people from Brush Art. So I started exhibiting in there as well. So right now, I am exhibiting in both places, Brush Art and the All Arts Gallery. And on occasion, because my brother lives in Woodstock, as he, and he's an artist too, uh, we exhibit in Woodstock on occasion as well. Woodstock, Vermont, that is. Yeah, okay. Um, so what are you working on right now? Well, I just finished a, uh, just finished a few pieces. So I'm starting a new one. Uh, I just um, started the form, and I don't know where it's going to go. I usually, uh, usually sort of reveals itself to me as I go along. I'm also working on a uh, little project that I like. I did a piece called uh, Puff, which is of a dragon, and then a lot of people liked it, so I did another piece of a dragon along the same line, and I called it the Magic Dragon. And now I'm also working at the same time uh, on a piece called Anna Lee, where they all live. And uh, so I'm doing those two things at the same time. But at now, uh, with October coming around the corner, I have to do my Christmas uh, my, my um, Christmas uh, card, and I do a new one every year. And I have about two or three hundred people that I have, friends and colleagues from work and uh, people that have purchased pieces from me. And uh, so those are the people that I mail it out to. And I try to make it a, a, a unique and a different one every year. So it's time to get down to that. Yeah. So uh, as we get older, you know, I'm 76 and uh, I... I just uh, am always interested in the creative process as we get older. You know, I I, uh, I know that some I know that some rock stars feel that they kind of lose the edge over the years. You know, their most creative years are in their 30s and sometimes in their, their 40s. How do you feel? How do you feel? Age is is age having any effect on your creative process? No, not at all. Matter of fact, I think I've gotten better. Uh, my pieces have more depth to them. Uh, and I work on that all the time. I don't like to do a flat uh, piece of artwork. Um, so I've, uh, no, my technique is the same. I've gotten uh, my, my ideas. Um, I, I had um, bins of old National Geographics and I go through those on occasions and uh, rip out a page and uh, I get ideas from them as well. And, you know, hey, I, see other artists work and I <laughs> I get inspiration from that and sometimes a little copying doesn't hurt. <laughs> well, um, I really appreciate the time that you've spent. Uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, I, I love your work. I've, I've been a fan of yours for some time. Uh, you do have a wall. You are a co-op member at Arts League of Lowell, 307 uh, Market Street <laughs> in Lowell, Massachusetts. And I'm also a co-op well, co member at the Brush Art Gallery as well. Right, which is right down the street. So uh, if you get a chance, you can see Michael Lichtenstein's work at the Brush Gallery or at the Arts League of Lowell. Or on occasions at the Air Loft Gallery when they have shows as well. Um, it's a unique little gallery worthwhile taking a look at. Only on weekends, though. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.